Hi, uh, thank you for coming so, so early. I hope you <laughs> had uh, time to sleep. I'm <laughs> uh, glad well, to you know, be here to talk about this project uh, today. I've been uh, working on it since uh, June and uh, it's been really interesting. So just um, if you don't uh, know me already, uh, I'm Hugo. Um, I've been uh, with the Free Software Commission Europe since uh, 2009. And, um, but today I'm not going to talk about free software directly, but about another subject, Tango Service. And um, you know the mysterious name of uh, Tango Service didn't treat. So this project is about fixing the biggest lie on the web. So the thing is, what is the biggest lie on the web? Well, you basically all know it because you've been lying all the time. And I'm talking about this kind of lie. I have read and agreed to the terms and conditions. So uh, this is a screenshot from uh, a mobile, which is making it even worse. And uh, it's one of the agreements that you have to agree with when you uh, want to use applications and different stuff. And it's uh, 62 pages long. So imagine uh, you are on your mobile phone and you're trying to read uh, in incredible, incredibly complicated texts, which is not maybe in your language. Here it's translated, but it's not always translated. <coughs> and, uh, well, the agreement is kind of forced on you, like, like this on the pop-up, and if you don't click agree, you cannot use it, but... So, it's kind of, I'm kind of wondering what kind of agreement is that, and uh, uh, what we can do to fix uh, this problem, because obviously, you have not read the terms. And uh, we have uh, some evidence that people don't read the terms. For instance, uh, in 2009, I think, um, some website did uh, very. They, they have a very uh, interesting prank. They inserted in the terms that uh, when you agreed to uh, register, you would also sell your soul to the service. <laughs> so seven thousand five hundred people, uh, without notice, without realizing, sold their soul to a game website. <laughs> yeah. So it's a joke, but the thing is, what if really important rights were in the terms? What if you were giving up voluntarily, because nobody is forcing you to sign these agreements, uh, important rights of your life, of your creations, of um, your activities online? So first, so we realized this problem and we thought, what is exactly the problem? So the first thing is, obviously, the terms are really too long. It took, um, there was a research from the US and um, they looked at the average length of the terms and the average uh, reading of speed of the population and the number of websites. Well, they put that together and they get to this number. That's 76 days. It is the number of days you would need to read all the agreements you agree to online every year. So every year, imagine, if you don't lie, and if you really read the terms, I just said read, I didn't say understand. If you just read the terms, it would take you 76 days every year for every individual. If you try to get a cost on the economy, that's, that's huge. It's billions of dollars, it's bigger than the, the GDP of some countries, and it's... So there's the fact that we agree to a lot of services terms, but also some of the terms are really long. That's uh, Hamlet. It's um, well, it's it's not terms of service, but um, it's short. It's shorter than the terms of iTunes. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> there's also the fact that um, it's not only iTunes. I mean, because I've been showing iTunes already earlier, but uh, PayPal is uh, longer than Macbeth. <laughs> so, <laughs> imagine the things I've been through uh, this summer, reading all these terms. I could have been reading Shakespeare instead. Anyway, so that's the problem. They're very long. The other problem is that they are sometimes very impossible to understand. So, 
the thing is, not everybody is a lawyer, so sometimes you're reading sentences and you know it's kind of hard to understand what what, are they, what do they mean by that? What is this? If you don't have all the keywords to understand uh, the concepts, the legal consequences, etc., you don't really know what you are agreeing to. What does it have to do with cookies? Well, the thing is, we are talking about terms of service online, and they also have to deal with technical issues. So here, you know about uh, technical definitions. If I said to you, what is a cookie, you know what a cookie is. Now, when terms, when services are requiring co cookies to use a service, they have to give um, you know, some kind of agreement in the terms to have cookies on your computer, etc. So you all know what a cookie is. Let's look at the definition of a cookie according to GitHub terms. So a cookie is a small amount of data, blah, blah, blah. Anonymous unique identifier. Okay, so you read through it and then you stop for a minute and you look at these words. Anonymous unique identifier. And then said, well, there's something wrong here. I mean, anonymous is when you can't distinguish between people, right? I mean, if you're anonymous, then I, I don't know who, uh, if person A is different from person B, or I cannot distinguish between people because they have no name, they have no ID, they have no pseudonym, it's anonymous, right? Then you have the word unique. But if you're unique, then you can really distinguish between people, so they're not really anonymous. Plus, uh, GitHub is giving you an identifier, so they can identify you. So I'm not saying that cookies are bad, necessarily, but this definition of a cookie is just weird. If you look at um, all the definitions of cookies, like Mozilla's, you realize that you know they are saying it's a, for a website to allow you uh, to be recognized by a browser. So if the browser recognized you and the website recognized who you are, you're not anonymous, obviously. The funny thing with GitHub's terms is that there's a tendency in, in on the web that uh, when people start a service, they don't really know what to do with the terms. So they usually go to a, a famous website that they like and copy and paste the terms for their own service. So the GitHub's terms are everywhere. <laughs> many, many services just copy paste the, the terms from GitHub's, even, even though sometimes it doesn't really apply to what they're providing. But they also, so they are also um, exporting the mistakes that you can find in, in GitHub's terms. While the definition of cookies by Mozilla was maybe good or bad, it, it was incredibly long. So one of the first solutions that people came up with um, is icons. If we give people uh, easy icons to understand, then maybe uh, we would have a better agreement, a better understanding of the terms. So this is a project uh, called Privacy Icons by uh, people who are from Mozilla. <coughs> and so they, they started uh, to design a bunch of icons. Uh, describing the most important cases that uh, are dealt with in terms. So this is two icons uh, explaining if the personal data you are providing to the website are going to be used for the intended purposes or if you also allow them to use the data for other purposes than the service. So basically imagine that um, you're using I don't know, a social network so you give uh, a picture of your profile and they say, okay, your, your picture are only are going to be used for the social network. But in that case, they could use a picture for other purposes. You're giving them that right. All right, so it's fine. You have nice icons, green, red, okay, so you can't get the idea. Now the problem is, creative commons, okay. One, two, three, four, five, so that's 11 icons. Okay, corporate licenses, 11 icons, we can get through that. But terms, they are more complicated. You have many more terms, many more uses. Uh, this is a database of the most common uh, terms uh, you can find on the web. So this is just a screenshot, you don't get the full list. So this is about uh, 160 vari variations of terms. So if you really go the way of uh, icons, you would need about 200, 300 icons to um, convey the information. So it's, com it's completely broken. You, you cannot really convey this kind of uh, information with icons because it would be uh, almost as difficult to understand the whole icon system than to understand the terms themselves. So 
it's, it's complicated, but we think that it should be fixed because you know you don't have to be a copyright expert to use Creative Commons licenses. You don't have to be a copyright expert to use the web, and it should not require you to be a lawyer to use uh, services online. If you look at Creative Commons, they have the icons, but they also have the human readable summary that they call it. So it's it's just a, a plain English summary of the, of what the contract actually says. So the contract is the lawyer version, the legal version, and the deed, as they call it, is the normal version where you understand what it is about. So I think that we thought that it's, it, would, it would be the, the right approach uh, to combine icons and um, summaries. Uh, so the, that way we can uh, fix the understanding, the common understanding of the terms. And the thing is, it already worked. If you look at uh, free software, we, we kind of have, uh, we, well, we have the icons, but it's not really useful. But the thing is, people understand the GPL. Now, you know the copyleft and stuff like this. But if you ask, <coughs> who has read the whole GPL version 2? Yeah, OK. <laughs> There's a lot of people, but then, have you really understood all the legal concepts in it? I, I can raise my hand for the first question. I cannot raise my hand for the second question. But the main, the main points are understood, and the, the value of the contract is there. The value, I have a professor who told me that um, a good contract is, is a letter that uh, you write to the judge in the hope he will never read it. So if you go to court, you know, one of the first value of the contract is, has failed, because contract is supposed to be a private rule where you, you, know, you deal between um, parties and you, have, uh, you agree to do stuff. And terms of service are not different, they're contracts. So if you don't accept them, they have no value. And uh, if we just accept things without uh, negotiating, if we just say, okay, do whatever you want, you know, then we, it means we are giving up our rights voluntarily. So that's, that's why we started uh, this project um, this year. And um, what we give is, I'm gonna show the website now because Maybe some of you haven't seen it already. Um, so this is um, what the website looks like now. Um, So you have a um, summary of, of the services. So the thumbs down, thumbs up, it's, you know, it's quite easy to understand that some things are positive, some things are not so positive. <clears throat> and that way you get the uh, main points uh, out of the terms and uh, you have a rough idea before signing up. Because not all terms are evil. I mean, uh, Wikipedia or Facebook, uh, obviously, they are all um, using some uh, software to run, but it uh, doesn't mean they are taking your rights away. Um, and so if you go below, if we have enough information about terms, about a specific term, we can uh, give a class. So <clears throat> you just combine all the information, there's a, behind the scene there's some system of scores and stuff, but you can see the source code. <clears throat> and then you can get a class for the service. So A is, is really good and E is like, yeah not really good, and uh, so in between you get uh, different classes. So back to this. Um, so now let's, let's have a look at them. The, the content of, of the terms, because now we start to have a good overview of, of what's in it. So let's start with copyright, because it's a subject that we usually know quite well here. <coughs> so, that's... So we've got a list of the topics that are most uh, interesting and, and that come most of the time. So if you look at copyright, it's here. 
you can compare all the different types of service on a specific topic. So here in the case of copyright, and uh, you can see that the, so the more it's uh, the higher it is, the more important it's going to to be to define the, the class of the service. <coughs> so if you look at um, well, I guess many of you use GitHub, so you can see that GitHub's license um, is kind of okay because they they say they claim no intellectual property rights, whatever that means, um, and they basically they don't ask you a copyright license um, that is going beyond the strict necessities to run the service. The only thing you, the only right you're really giving is for others to view publicly your your source code, and you also agree them. Uh, you also agree that uh, they are allowed to fork your source code. So it doesn't really mean that your code will be free software because you don't have a real license, but it means you give everybody the rights to fork your code. So it's kind of. <clears throat> so now you see that some of the copyright terms are not so good. Like if you look at TweetPick, you'll see that basically every picture you upload there is um, you know you're just giving them the right to to sell those, and uh, they have partners and they don't have to ask you for your permission again. They just take your pictures and license them out to other people. So they have uh, deals with uh, media companies and uh, others, and um, you know you're just giving them free content and they're getting money out of it, and you won't see that money ever. What if you? Now you look at back. You look back at the you know what is copyright, and if you look at the U.S. Constitution, they are saying it is to promote the progress of science and useful arts and well, culture in general. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. um, you had the numbers there, and some of the numbers were negative. So you had minus eighty and minus twenty-five, mm -hmm. and then the text was brought, and the copyright was broader than necessary. How 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 the numbers set? What what? Really so the mean? thing is, it's just uh, we. We, the more, the higher it is, the more important it's going to influence the class of the service. And so, basically, if you compare between services, you can see which one is better than the other. For instance, if you give to some service all your copyright, well, obviously, it's, we, th we think it's kind of wrong. If you have another service saying, we only ask for the copyright which is needed to run the service, it's different. And the thing is, it makes a legal difference. Because if they use a copyright for stuff which is not needed to run the service, then it's copyright infringement. They're not allowed to do that. Um, some of the terms that, like tweet picks, it's really broad. It means you give them basically, I mean, practically all the copyright that you have. There are very little difference. And the thing is, if you look at the, the spirit of copyright, it just, um, it doesn't make sense because they are getting some free content, um, and they're getting money for, from it for for uh, pictures or, or videos that they have no uh, they, they put no energy in producing. I mean, it's all your content, right? You you did that, and you give them away um, you give them away the copyright, and they make money of it. I mean, it's it's just I don't understand how it's um, compatible with the idea of copyright, where there is some. You know, there is some idea of public uh, benefit in copyright. It's not always working, for sure, but it's kind of what they are claiming to do. And you look at TweetPig, and you're like, no, it's clearly not for the public benefit. And the thing is, if you look at the last years, governments have backed up industries in, you know, in saying that we steal other people's content and saying you know, that what we do is illegal and criminal criminals, but they never protect it for what we do, what we produce and all the copyright that is kind of taken away from us in a very, very um, wrong way because we don't really know, because it's hidden in the terms. And I think it's a big issue. It's a big issue because some services are really used by a lot of people. This is um, a copyright license uh, from a very popular service. I guess you easily guess which one. Facebook? Yeah, Facebook. You grant us a non-exclusive, transferable, sub-licensable license to use any IP content that you post. That's it. No limitations. It's just um, a few explanations. Uh, non-exclusive 
means that you, as the, the copyright holder, you still have the ability to, to license your content to other people, other services. But, you know, guess what? Some services ask you for an exclusive license. Like uh, Craigslist, it's... Um, uh, I don't really know how to describe this. Basically, um, yeah, I mean, I'm lacking the English uh, vocabulary for this. So Craigslist, uh, for some time, asked uh, users for an exclusive license. And they started to sue uh, competing services because uh, users were posting their announces on other services. And they couldn't do that because they grant an exclusive license to Craigslist. Uh, transferable and sublicensable basically means that you give your rights to Facebook, but they can, you know, they can sell these rights to other parties, or they can just give these rights to, to other parties in, in a license deal. And they don't need to ask your permission for that. You already gave them when you signed the terms. So let's. Um, I'm going to skip this. The other problem is that these changes, uh, are, the changes are really frequent in terms. So if you look at the copyright license from Twitter, it's really interesting. So that's the first version on the left, and that's the version since uh, 2009 on the right. So when Twitter started, they basically um, took the, the, um, the same terms that uh, uh, Flickr had. And they said, uh, well, you know, your tweets, um, we don't claim copyright on it, we don't want any license. Um, and we also encourage you to contribute your tweets to the public domain. <clears throat> so what you have to see is that um, at the time it's a bit, you know, it's a bit weird. Um, but anyway, can tweets really be copyrightable? You can discuss that. Anyway. They changed their business model since then, and uh, now they ask you for a very broad corporate license. It's basically uh, almost the same as Facebook. And um, so the important part here, for instance, is the, the right to you know, sub-license. So they, they only have to ask you permission again to, to license your copyright to other parties. So it's a big change, right? So you would, you would figure that this kind of change in the terms they would send you a, a nice email explaining, you know, that they changed the corporate license, and well, wrong because um, if you look at the terms, they say they can change them in many ways. Uh, not all of them are are wrong. Some of them are really nice, like they give you uh, emails and they give you time to think about it. Uh, so, for instance, uh, SoundCloud. They give you, uh, they send you an email, and they say, "Well, okay, we're going to have the changes, and we're going to apply them in six weeks. So you have six weeks to make up your mind, and, and you know, give us feedback if you want, and think if you want to keep using the service. If you don't, then you know, just close your account and get out. It's okay. Now, if you look at Twitter, which is uh, an important service, they say, you know, basically." We can change the terms at any time, when, you know, for the reason we think are good. Uh, we can give notification if we want to. Uh, so it can be a Twitter update from the official Twitter account. Yeah, of course, you're going to see this. Or they can send you an email. So for the change I saw about the corporate license, you would expect them to send you know, a real email. What they did is they, they sent a very general email where you add a small link somewhere to the official blog post with nice pictures and nice corporate blah 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 and then there was a small paragraph oh by the way we also changed the corporate license and there were some bullet points about the changes and on the changes about the corporate license they did not mention that they now asked for the right to sub-license so it was the most important change in my opinion in this corporate license and they didn't tell you anywhere you had to click in a link in an email then you had to read through a whole corporate uh, blog post with, with a lot of useless information, then you wouldn't get information, you would have to go read the terms yourself to find out if you had the legal knowledge to do so, that they now asked you the right to sub-license. So this is clearly not acceptable and we really are trying to fix this because uh, changes are happening all the time, it's not always, um, it's not always uh, Good, and 
We are working now on a tool which is called uh, Toastback, and uh, we need some uh, help on developing this. So it's basically, um, uh, we have a list of, uh, of links of where all the terms are, and uh, we basically crawl this regularly. Then we look at the differences, and if we see important differences, then we have summaries and we try to develop an interface where people can easily uh, see the changes and uh, maybe you know, get an email if important changes are detected. So basically trying to fill in the, the tasks that the services are not doing. So if, you, if we go a bit further in the terms, and it's clear that there are important problems. I said, um, I think some, in some services which are very popular, you have almost no power. Well, I say almost because um, fortunately in some cases the, the law protects you. So what is outside the contract, might be, uh, might be copyright law, might be uh, consumer law, or other laws. Um, you know, so, so some laws will say that these kind of uh, terms are not acceptable, they are illegal or they are void or whatever. The problem is that until you go see a judge, they, they're still there and they, they're kind of effective. We think that if we show right to people that um, they are giving away their rights in this way. We are trying to change the balance between uh, centralized platforms which are needed, uh, which need all these rights, and other platforms. So for instance, if you're Facebook, you have so many people to deal with, so many legal cases to deal with, that you know, if you respect the law and respect your users, it would be really costly for you to, to, put up, uh, to set up all the legal processes. But right now, this cost, I don't think they really take it. I mean, for one billion people, the legal cost of, respect, of uh, managing rights and issues should be really, really high. It's the kind of cost you wouldn't have with a very much smaller social network if you know the people on the social network itself. You will need this kind of agreement. I mean, not the, the same, uh, you would, a lot of clauses would not be needed. For instance, if, you're, if it's only a local um, social network. And so, we. we we should make sure that uh, people see that the cost is either our rights or on them. And I think it should be on them, not on our rights. The, the other problem is that some of the illegal um, terms that you sign up to, I said, you have some protection thanks to the law and if you go see a judge. Now the problem is that a lot of these terms have uh, jurisdiction clauses. So basically, if you want to sue Facebook, well, you, you have to sue them in California. So that's, uh, I'm not saying it's, it's, it's I mean, it's, it, it, is, uh, uh, it is allowed by, by law in most cases, uh, but it's, you know, it's not really convenient for you if you want to, to sue them. And um, another problem is that uh, in some terms you also give up uh, important rights, um, like, um, Like this, you agree that basically you will not uh, sue them in the law court. So if you have um, litigation matter with them, you have to go through arbitration, and um, you know arbitration is definitely not the same as a regular lawsuit. Um, and they also ask you to waive the right to a trial by jury or to participate in a class action. So a class action is a very convenient uh, legal procedure. Uh, when a lot of users want to sue a service, they can get together and sue them collectively, basically. So if you give up on your right to, to this class action, it means you have to sue them as an individual, which is really more costly in time and, and money for you. And we're talking about Netflix here. So it's not just, you know, it's not a, so, some small service. It's a, it's a very popular service in the US. This is um, about usually the problem that you sign up to services and they don't really allow you to, you know, to get out, basically. Uh, they will say we keep your data, or they will say we keep this, or they will say you will not um, be able to, to remove this content. So you're kind of locked in in some cases. Um, the other problem is that they sometimes reserve the right for any time, any reason, or no reason to just close your account. <laughs> yeah. 
So they are in power, they are in charge, you, you have nothing to say. Uh, this is Delicious, it's a bookmarks um, service, uh, which at some point was very popular, but I guess they still have a lot of users. And uh, when you terminate your account, they may retain a copy for legitimate business purposes. Um, I've tried to find out what legitimate business purposes really mean. I'm still not sure. Uh, but I don't know, but if I terminate my account with a service, I, I don't want them to keep a copy of, of the things I did. And I sure don't want them to use them for business purposes. It's the whole point. That's why I'm leaving the service. Now, some of the terms are just uh, not acceptable. Uh, the first one is um, 500 pixels. It's a website for photographers to share pictures. It's usually very quality, uh, photographs of good quality. And uh, when, you, uh, when you send them uh, pictures, you give up on your moral rights. So the moral rights basically is uh, something you have in some uh, um, some droit d'auteur and uh, continental corporate law countries. You don't really have them. <coughs> Officially, you have them also in the U.S. because uh, of the international agreements, but it's not really uh, the same. Anyway, basically, moral rights means um, um, you 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 have a right to attribution on your um, content. Basically. Um, if I take a picture, nobody can, can say uh, that uh, the picture was taken by them. Uh, if they do that, uh, they are infringing on my moral right of, to say that this picture is, is what I did. It's a photograph that I did myself, not somebody else. Um, you have other rights attached to this. Anyway, I don't really see a justification for asking this kind of uh, clause. Um, I asked them, why do you put this clause in it? And uh, basically, um, there was a blog post from the, from the, the, the company, uh, and they were explaining with a very unrelated law case why they were asking for this clause. So, um, I, I can give you the link if you're interested in it, but there's really no um, relation between a photo. Yeah. Is this at all possible to enforce in most European countries? No. I thought illegal. that was sort of uh, um, impossible to yeah. waive your in, moral in, rights. In Europe, uh, it's illegal. You cannot, yeah. um, I mean, Europe. In most European countries, of, uh, a judge will look at this and say, uh, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. No, it's not legal. But the problem again is that um, in some countries it's legal, in some it's not. Um, it's not really the task of, of the project to, to say what is legal or not. Uh, because it depends on the countries, it depends on very different uh, factors. Um, and um, also, we, we do, it's, it's the task of a judge to, to say what is legal or not. So the only thing we're doing is, from the point of view of the user, is it a good thing or not? Is it fair? Uh, does it seem to be uh, uh, something uh, reasonably um, to be asked for? And whether it's legal or not, you know, if I'm a photographer, it's not okay to ask you to give up on your moral rights. Um, yeah, that's just a small um, call for help because we really need uh, contributions um, in terms of um, energy. Um, so, just uh, very quickly, um, peer reviewing means um, all the, the data that we have. Basically, it's an email uh, mailing list. People send an email with a small uh, quote from the terms that they've read and say, okay, I think there's a problem there, I think it's not really good. Then people reply, and then we all kind of try to analyze what's in it and understand it and create a summary. Then it gets on the website, and what's very important is that on the website, you get close to each point a link where you can get the full email history so, so that it's very transparent. Otherwise, um, you know, there is no reason to, to trust uh, in terms of uh, so it's really important that we have this transparency and this peer reviewing. Uh, the other thing is we need uh, developers to help us, uh, especially for Toastback, which is this tool uh, allowing to keep track of changes in terms. And then of course everything is uh, free software. It's AGPL. Um, all the data is uh, Creative Commons data. Um, and we have some uh, tools already if you want to 
support the project is already really uh, important to download the browser extension and to uh, show the extension to other people. And of course, if you have some skills in developing Firefox extensions or other extensions, um, we really need to improve them. Um, yeah, this is the link to the, there's a GitHub repository. If you don't want to use GitHub, there's uh, other means. Yeah. What about the uh, negotiation and things? Because until now it's only agree or disagree. Maybe can I negotiate and then? Yeah. So the thing is, we really um, try to create dialogue with the corporations uh, running the services, corporations or non-profit, uh, so that we have some feedback, giving them feedback, because we want to improve the terms. Uh, the other thing is, um, we value when a service is organizing feedback themselves. Uh, for instance, uh, there's a service called uh, app.net, and uh, they have um, a GitHub uh, page of their terms where you can create issues, you can comment, you can uh, you can branch it and, and give uh, an alternative version. So they really organize the feedback on it, which is a kind of um, way to negotiate, basically. But it's these systems, you know, they, a lot of people use them, so it's not going to work if you have an individual negotiation. But what we need is to you know be together and, and make sure that collectively we, we say we as users of this service do not think that it's acceptable that you ask us for all the copyright on the pictures, for instance. So if we get together in the pro in, in terms of service in a tweet or in you know, other projects, I think we can you know rebalance the, the equation between between the services, which are very powerful because they have you know they have the money and their businesses, and on the other side the users because in many cases, we are a lot of users. Um, yeah, and that's just where you can um, uh, start um, helping us uh, on code and others. Um, and if you're also interested in legal questions, uh, there are tons of very interesting legal questions. Um, this is one from GitHub I showed earlier. Um, yeah, just uh, wondering what is uh, how. What would happen if, if you had a, a copyright case uh, between uh, GitHub and uh, code where there would not be any um, free software license? Uh, because in the terms, uh, people agree to, f to allow others to fork the repository. So I guess uh, if you have a case on this, it would, uh, a judge would need to define a fork because fork is never defined in the terms. So it could be funny. Anyway, there are others, um, other questions which uh, Oh, interesting. Yeah, I think that's it. Uh, do we uh, do we have some time for questions? No. Okay. Really? Yeah, because I think if you have questions, you can just ask him. Because no time for recording. Well, Sorry. <laughs> okay. We we'll, we'll ask your questions anyway. I mean, I mean, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're discussing large corporations here, Facebook, etc. Um, if I post something to a Usenet newsgroup or a mailing list. Uh, you get distributed to many people and many different independent archives will put them on the web. Uh, and if I want to leave that service and have my old postings taken down, that's just impossible. Nobody's gonna take down if I regret a posting. Uh, how is this different? From my personal perspective, from trying to back out of Facebook, uh, the difference is that uh, you don't agree to the services doing that. So it's in the frame of what the law allows people to do and what they don't allow them to do. So if it's illegal to 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 make archives of public mailing lists, which I'm not sure, no, then nobody, nobody ever agreed to this. It just happened. Yeah, but um, in, in, in a society, in democracy, what is not forbidden by law is allowed. So you don't, they don't, if, you, if they don't have to ask you for the permission, then maybe there's a problem in the law, but it's not a problem. It's, um, so if I go after these archives and I say that I have the copyright, yeah, then the instance, laws should be on my side, but it isn't, because yeah. nobody... But it's a, it's a problem in law, then. It's a, a different problem, in my opinion. So for, for the way I see it, the individual is uh, in the same position, and uh, but you're only attacking the corporations and not the uh, informal. Yeah, well, one problem at a time. <laughs> um, is those terms of this a contract 
Mm -hmm. For its flavor? No, they're contracts. The contract. That's the time. Um, I don't know if in Europe or North are, but in Sweden there are about 50 years of case law that demand quite a lot on contract, mm -hmm. on informed consent. Yeah, yeah, sure. And what informed them mean and all that. Why is that not also enforced? Well, um, sometimes it, it would be uh, enforced, sometimes it would, a judge, it's a judge who would say if it's legal or not, because if the law says some forms, but you, it's a problem that you would have to go to a judge and make sure that your rights are respected. Uh, but in a lot of cases, I, mean, I don't think there's anything in, illegal in the uh, form sense, not always. Not Did always. There are a lot of issues. You can make changes in, in contracts. Uh, there's a lot of uh, legal uh, issues around there. Uh, again, the problem is not we, we don't. It's not our task to see if it's legal or not. Uh, the, we're trying to fix the problem before uh, because you know, it's not scalable with everyone. You know. Can I ask that question for you? Yeah, sure. Because okay, so after Swedish law, yeah, I agree with you. You can't change the term of service after the fact. That's the way that the, the copyright law. Oh, sorry, the contract law mm -hmm. looks. But there's a very interesting exception, and that's starting with shrink wrap agreements that then became click wrap, uh, click wrap, click wrap mm -hmm. agreement. And basically, within technology, the whole concept of the first of all being informed and informed consent is gone. Mm -hmm. uh, changing the terms of service after the event is gone because, in almost in certain ways, is this a contract? And we don't really know because they're, they're a bit confusing. So they are contracts, but they're different from contracts. We call them licenses. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, what programming language do you use for the postback? Oh, I forgot. Somebody asked me this question uh, this morning and I forgot. Um, yeah, it's a lot of the code we did is JavaScript, but postback isn't JavaScript. So, um, I never mind. I can look at it. You just need um, GitHub and they give you the memory information quickly. So, yeah, I just want to erase the pointer. Okay, so TOS is JavaScript? No. Okay, well, maybe it's JavaScript. <laughs> 